Well, look at here. Guess who's number one in the Nielsen ratings again? Hey, 97.7. All righty, folks. We're back with you. Hope everybody's doing good. Don't forget you can tune in on uh, The Morning Dish with uh, the YouTube channel, Stephen Phillips with The Morning Dish. Check out this young man we got with us all the way from Florida, Brandon Bing. How are you, brother? I'm good. How y'all doing? Man, we just hanging in there. I guarantee you. I mean, now you seem like a big old boy, man. How 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 tall are you? Uh, I'm about six foot and uh, about two hundred and fifty pounds. Good Lord of mercy! So that's a good thing being in the music business. Cause I don't guess you got no oh, yeah. problem when they when it's time to pay you. You go get your check after yeah. you've done the show. <laughs> what is it? Waylon Jennings said, I "Always send the big guy for the money." That's it. Yeah, you that's gotta it. Go, you gotta be the extractor when you're out there. You know what I mean? Yeah, you go. Now you in Florida now, or you live in Nashville, or where you at? Uh, I live in both. I mean, I live in Nashville and I live in Florida. Um, I'm in Sam Sewell, Florida right now. Right. And um, then I go back up to Nash a uh, week after next. I'm actually going to Texas uh, this weekend because um, I got a uh, songwriter's retreat right. that we're doing outside of uh, Austin and uh, Dripping. Uh, I think it's called Dripping Springs. So now you're in Florida where you're you're just like right below Daytona, right? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Yeah. About, uh, about 15 minutes from the speedway. Oh, wow, man. That must be cool. Did you go to races a lot growing up? Oh, yeah. It's fun to go out there, man. And uh, we also got the new Smyrna Speedway where they got the uh, Arkham and Art Series, all the uh, the intro races and the amateur events that go on, um, you know, right before the season kicks off and throughout. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. There's definitely a lot of noise going on. and um, But it's peaceful because, you know, um, in Sam Sewer, it's uh, on the backside cut of the, you know, Tomoka Wildlife Management and the Ocala Forest. So, we're out there, you know, we don't have to worry about anybody getting in the way, and it's just kind of one light town, you know? Yeah, I think all the folks down there is moving up here, man. We've got a whole pile of Florida folks up here in Georgia. Oh, now. yeah. Golly. <laughs> but, you know, so how did you get into the music business? How long have you been in the music business? Um, I've been in Nash. Well, I mean, on this level, uh, I've been in about going on five years now. I've uh, been in Nash since I was 28. Right. And uh, But I've done music since I was about five, six years old. Um, my dad actually, you know, went to Purdue University up in um, West Lafayette, Indiana, and um, he was a DJ. And then he also had the opportunity, you know, to work as an intern under um, Al Schumann and then uh, CBS Records. Oh, wow. Before, you know, Clive Davis, uh, you know, picked it up and turned it into Sony, what it is today. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting. There ain't no doubt about that. But now your style of, I guess, it, you know, it's, it's kind of gritty. I don't know, gritty country kind of music what what style would you call your music yeah i mean like really it's you know i kind of you know it's like with anything you're trying to find something to define a niche um more importantly i think it's really important and you know nowadays with the accessibility of social media and the amount of people that are trying to pursue i guess the uh the art or the craft of, of in country music right. per se um i i have different you know um elements um based off my inspirations and then also, you know, my, my family, uh, my mom's from Kentucky. So I was around a lot of, uh, you know, bluegrass, Americana folklore music, like coal mining music. Right. So I think a lot of my writing style, um, lends itself into that, you know, into that space. Um, but as far as the actual instrumentation, I was always a big proponent of, you know, real instruments. Um, I played cello when I was young, uh, played some trumpet and percussion. Um, and then, you know, I was a songwriter, throughout my youth and, and my high school and college years as well. So um, bringing in the things of, of my lifestyle was a big, you know, line dancer and two-stepper. We have a, a really, uh, you know, famous uh, honky-tonk down here in Sanford, Florida called The Barn in Sanford. And I had gone there for, you know, since I was like 18, 19 years old. So having that Texas, um, you know, uh, red dirt, a fusion, uh, but mixing it with a little bit of that Southern rock and roll and that like kind of like that Charlie Daniels 38 special kind of feel, you know? Right. And just kind of keeping it out long and gritty. So that's kind of where the, the vein is. Um, and, you know, being a rock head as well, growing up, I was really exposed to a lot of music. And right. um, I think that having some of the alternative and different, you know, rock um, textures, I think from playing drums, you know, heavier drums, heavier electric guitars, it just, it lends the listener to a, a better experience. And I'm really just trying to make that my own niche. I don't know what to call it, but uh, that's you know, it's, it's I like something. it. I mean, I really do. I mean, it's not, you know, it's it's a it's a different thing. But I like the I like the groove. I like, of course, I've got to where I like that gritty, greasy yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, that's kind of where I. Would you, don't you, you have a new song that just came out? Don't you? you just dropped it. Oh yeah. 
Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so I dropped a new song uh, to kick off 2022, and um, it's called Lockdown. And uh, that record came out uh, going into to New Year's. And, um, you know, being a songwriter, I think that's one of the biggest things, y'all. You know, like, I really want, as a musician, I guess, or more or less, I guess, as an artist, you know, as I'm building my brand and, and define myself uh, in the years ahead, um, I really want people to, to remember me and, and know me for, for my songwriting ability. Right. Um, and how I can in, in engage with the audience uh, through the lyrics, you know, painting pictures and telling stories. That's the whole thing. Folks, we're talking to Brandon Bean. Go to brandonbeanmusic.com, and that should take you to all his social media and all his shows and all the videos and everything that he's got going on. That's brandonbeanmusic.com. Uh, got some cool stuff, man. So now, you know, that's the thing, though, about musicians nowadays. Used to, you'd have to have a record label to ever do anything. But nowadays, you can actually get out, get a following. People can hear your music on the Internet and fall in love with it. And and then being a songwriter, singer-songwriter, that's I think that's the whole ticket now. Because used to, you yeah. know, you just have to look good in jeans, and they'd give you the song to sing, you know. But uh, oh yeah, that's the way... Which I love it. I'm a songwriter too. We've actually me and Packy wrote a song. We're trying to pitch. I don't know. It might be something you're interested in. We're up here from yeah. in Georgia. Uh, it's a song about dating your cousin. I don't know if that's something you'd be interested in. Or not. Hey, you know, I'm, hey, I'm down for anything if it makes sense and it's uh, <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna yeah. You, you do realize when he was talking about all you need to have was a tight pair of jeans, he was talking about himself, right? Yeah, because I was sitting there, I was like, I know you probably watched the video during 9-11 with me. I said, I don't wear tight jeans. You know, I made it real clear, the moose knuckle, you know, I can't be getting too constricted down there. Oh, man, I'm telling you, you know, that's the thing. I, don't, I do wear tight jeans now, but it's because of the COVID fat I've added on over the last couple of years, you know. And, I'm too cheap to go buy new jeans, but... Uh, oh, man, that's funny. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize how much talent comes from the state of Florida. Um, living there for 18 or 19 years. I'll tell you what, we just had a, a young lady on, Faith, mm -hmm. uh, from Tampa. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing how many great, great entertainers come out of Florida. And it's just great to see somebody who's got their own style, their own tone, their own voice. And I really like that. I, I'm, I'm with uh, Stephen on that, that gritty... Uh, sound is just really good. Yeah, you got a neat voice. I really appreciate too. that. Yeah, that's the thing about it. You know what? These you got a lot of folks out there trying to be these stars. It's already out there. You know, they're trying to be Waylon Jennings or something like that. You know, we've already had a Waylon. I think it's time for, you know, to move on to better stuff. Now you had a thing. I think on September you did that tribute to heroes. What what was the deal with that? Yeah, so uh, that was actually that was funny. That was that, that little video clip I was telling you about. Um, okay. About the. So I was out there at the uh, Popka Amphitheater, um, had an opportunity with uh, Chris and Preston to open up for Low Cash. And um, that was the 20th year anniversary for, you know, our fallen, you know, uh, heroes and uh, first responders as far as military and, and uh, active duty. Um, that was a really, you know, emotional, uh, special moment. And uh, I was really, you know, thankful. Uh, Brenda Blevins uh, and Humana, they had uh, gotten together and uh, gave me the opportunity to be on the lineup for that show. And, you know, growing up around that part of town, uh, Apopka is next to Wakaba in Seminole County. And that's where I grew up um, through my youth. And um, it was like a hometown show, you know, for our first responders and uh, military. So it was special. It was all 9-11. Um, about 2,400 people, wow. you know, roughly showed up. So it was a, it was a steady crowd. Um, it, was, it was, you know, I was surprised, you know, for us to be able to draw the amount that we did considering um, some of the other events going on with like K92 country radio and stuff that day, which, you know, obviously were preset because they had country thunder going on. Um, but yeah, it was still a great turnout, a lot of great people. Um, and what was also special for that was uh, I had an opportunity about a year and a half ago um, where almost two years ago now, man, time's four, but I was, uh, you know, inter engaged with uh, part of Richard Petty's team from NASCAR, uh, oh, yeah. Bob Crumboy, uh, was worked with him on the foundation. It's called Bikes for Kids. And um, I had a song that came out uh, this past November, 11-11. Uh, we had a little delay because of the, you know, the COVID and everything going on. And they wanted to protect, you know, Richard's, um, you know, health and, and uh, safety. So that was completely understandable. Um, I feel like it was a blessing in disguise, man, because so far it's been the most successful song that I've put out in such a short amount of time. Right. In the last, uh, you know, it's, it's already broken uh, almost 20,000 streams, you know, in the last, you know, five, six weeks. And um, it's just been really productive um, being able to pay homage to uh, our troops. Uh, it was for a, a book called Far Away Soldier, um, writing from a kid's perspective of his father being deployed yeah. and him having to kind of 
be the man at home, to, you know, filling those boots uh, while his dad was uh, deployed to take care of his mama and his grandma. And, uh, man, I think it just touches a lot of people. And um, it was just a special opportunity to have that stage to play it on for the first time as well. I'm for it. Man, I'm telling you right now, I think, uh, you know, our military people just get put on the back burner. It burns me up. We do a lot around here with them, but, uh, you know, people don't realize the reason we're free. Of course, the whole world's gone crazy right now, but uh, I'll have to hats off to you for that, no doubt. So let me ask you another question off the uh, subject. Do you watch Yellowstone? Oh, yeah. Oh, do you? Don't, I already know where you're going with this. <laughs> I was just at the game. Listen, I took my daddy up to uh, – Flew him up to Nash and, and, and brought him in for the uh, the Music City Bowl, uh, which was – he went to – like I said, he went to Purdue. So, Purdue was playing against uh, the Vols, you know, University of Tennessee. And um, it was crazy. You know, record uh, – uh, I guess it was a record um, crowd. You know, 69,000 and change showed up for that game right. uh, during a bowl game. So, it was, it was pretty special to be there. But he was, he was a little nervous because, you know – Bully maker over there with a bunch of orange shirts over there with bowls on. And, uh, but you know, I was in the bathroom during the break, uh, during halftime, and this cat's in there. He's like, he's like, oh, he's like, you must watch, uh, Yellowstone. And I was wearing a, you know, uh, blue Lucchese vest with a, you know, pearl snap. And I think he just saw the vest right. and automatically ended to it. And I was like, well, I hate to break it to you, partner. I said, but, uh, I've been I've been dressing like that for many a years yeah. before that show even came out was even a thought. But I have signed quite a few autographs with the name Rip on it. Hey, I'm telling you, man, do <laughs> it, <laughs> do it, man. I guarantee it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can get a free hot dog there at the ball game or something yeah. like that. But uh, <laughs> hey, it's a good show, man. No doubt. And you got, like I said, I think they stole it from you. No doubt. But uh, well, I just got one question because since we talked about you know a musician earlier that Stephen really adores. I want to get your take on Marilyn Manson. Oh boy, I, I'm yeah, thinking you, you know, you, Marilyn Manson Marilyn had to have an influence on you. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> I mean that was. It's funny. It's funny. Uh, you know, you're talking about that, but um, you know, when he did that rendition of "Tainted Love" back yeah. when I was, it, this was back in the '90s. You know, uh, it was you know uh, '90s, early 2000s. I was I was really a big metalhead at one point. You know, listening to a lot of uh manson and uh you know five finger death punch and death leopard slipknot all those guys and um you know he's a he's an interesting character but you know that that that's part of it right i think that's one of the things about being an artist is you know as much as you're who you are and as much as you are with the, the lyrics and so on and so forth and the songs like you mentioned steven a lot of people used to be a pretty face and uh you know wear whatever they had on in the clothes uh and they would get the songs from the songwriters um you know, he also his had a creative persona, and you know it sells, and it's been going for hell uh, twenty years at least. Yeah, I know, but he, hey, uh, hell is right. <laughs> he, he definitely ain't pretty. I guarantee it. Now. No, he's definitely not pretty. No, by any means, but, yeah. but uh, a, a, a definitely a unique place to uh, to get into. Um, I think one thing I admire about some of those people as artists that are um, so kind of off the beaten path and just you know. Um, Kind of off the rocker, I guess. Is, off uh, the rocker. There you go. Yeah, I'm with you that's a that. good way. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find the right way. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter, man. We're, really un, cool we're unfair and unbalanced <laughs> here, man. Lay with it. I guarantee it. Folks, we're talking. They do to, give a lot of inspiration, you know. So We're talking to Brandon Bing, music.com. Go check him out. Anything we got to get to a break. Anything else we missed out, man? I appreciate you. No doubt about it. I love you. Y'all need to go check out his music, no doubt. And uh, I think you're going to really love it. And uh, we need to keep up with you and see what's going on. I love doing that. But anything we missed? Um, I mean, really, uh, you know, I got uh, a whiskey company, uh, Bangtail Whiskey, uh -oh. uh, Bangtail Whiskey, and it's on there. Uh, I got picked up by Atlanta Beverage for all my Georgia folk out here. Um, and uh, we're going to be doing a rollout uh, this year, 2022. After my next set of bottles come in, we do the bottling process over these next couple months. And uh, so stay tuned. If you go on Brandon Bing Music on Instagram or uh, Facebook, you can see the Bangtail Whiskey and uh, you can check it out. And uh, we'll be doing tastings, bottle signings. And, Hopefully booking a lot of shows and uh, festivals coming up in Georgia in the year ahead. So uh, I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of people, you know, on the road and, and connecting with some good friends and family I got up that way anyway. So, yeah, I'll be looking. I did not know about the whiskey, so that changes the whole thing. I really like it. Oh, now. 
Yeah. He'll do anything to get a case of free whiskey, dude. <laughs> hey, look, look, We're friends look, now. I in the back pocket. So I, gotta, I can't give you all my tricks. Up, <laughs> all right, Brandon, man, we appreciate you, brother. You take care, and uh, we'll be keeping up with you. And, uh, you know, good luck with all the success, man. I hey, appreciate y'all. Have a good day. Thank all you. Thank you for spending a little time with us. And remember, you can tune in every morning at WJULradio.com at 8 a.m. Eastern. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook, The Morning Dish.